If you're in your first microeconomics class and you feel like you're probably gonna fail it, this is the core right here of what you need to know about elasticity. If you need help with the other units, I'm doing a 10 day series walking through everything. Elasticity is all about the percent change in quantity compared to the percent change in price. It is not about the slope of the supplier demand curve. We'll get into that in a little bit. If the percent change in quantity is greater than the percent change in price, then whatever we're working with, supplier demand is elastic. If percent change in quantity is less than percent change in price, then our supply or demand, whatever we're working with is inelastic. And then if our percent change in quantity is equal to our percent change in price, then we are unit elastic. You might be wondering about the plus or minus on these percentages. You don't really need to pay attention to them when it comes to elasticity. They will vary depending on if you're working with the supply or demand curves. Hey, real quick, before moving on, if you are in desperate need of help before your exam and need me to walk you through everything, I can explain to you this entire class in two hours. I've got 95 like minute long TikTok like clips that step by step walk you through everything you need to know. And it's free to unlock all of them. Go to my site, enter your email and get started now. But anywho, let's get back to this. I'm going to guess you've seen something like this where it's a more horizontal demand line and your professor says this demand is elastic. And then they'll show you this more horizontal demand curve and say this demand is inelastic. And then they'll show you this one at 45 degrees and say it's unit elastic. That's fine conceptually or theoretically, but when we're actually working with two different points that we're moving between on the demand or supply curve, we've got to lean into the midpoint method to try truly find the elasticity between those points, holding differences of scale and quantity and price constant. I'm not going to dig into this too in depth in this video because it's, it's a little bit advanced, but like when we solve out the midpoint method here, we get a price elasticity of demand of negative 1.4, which since is less than negative one means that we're working with elastic demand between these two points, not unit elastic, even though this demand curve looks like a 45 degree angle. I know there's a lot of numbers right here. I kind of dove into a little bit of the price elasticities here. I'd recommend you go check out my site. I break down all of this stuff in a couple of minutes with my concept breakdowns. If you've got a question that you just want to ask me, go ahead and comment it and I'll respond. I want to make sure you're feeling prepped and ready for your upcoming exam.